Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Tonight, we're playing a one-shot that we've run a couple of times before. It's entitled The Door Beyond. It was written by Matt Ryan and Noah Lloyd, and it's from their online collection of one-page scenarios at Reckoning of the Dead. I'll be GMing, and this is version three. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. The tiny little town of Gravesport sits on the northern side of Cape Flatterly in Clallam County uh, in the northwest corner of Washington State. The date is October 12th, 1921. Uh, Gravesport is a fishing village with a population of only about 130 people. Their main commodity is smelt, salmon, and occasionally albacore tuna. Some of the large, uh, the larger industrial fisheries have their eyes on Gravesport, but for now, it remains a remote location. Indeed, there is only one road that leads out of town, and it often gets washed away during the rainy season. By far, the most common way to get there is via boat. There isn't much in the small town. But everyone knows everyone, and they tend to look out for one another. The weather can be incredibly harsh and foggy. Most of the year, the town is shrouded in cool, wet fog that hangs in the air often past noon. Today is one of those foggy days. Near the center of town is a tackle shop, aptly named the Bass Hole, owned and operated by Margaret Bentley, wife of Dirk Bentley, a local fisherman. She has one employee, Bobby McKenzie, who has worked for Margaret since he was 16. He's a good kid. Across the street is a small pub where the locals hang out. Yes, it's prohibition, but nobody in Gravesport, including the sheriff, gives a shit about that. As we begin our tale, Bobby McKenzie is stacking boxes behind the counter in the bass hole. He's noticed this morning that Margaret doesn't seem to have it all together. She seems a bit distracted. Did she have a fight with Dirk? Is something missing from the inventory? Something is definitely eating at her this morning. So, Margaret, um, you seem a little distracted. What's up? Oh, nothing. It, it's, it's just. Well, I just I haven't seen Dirk in a little while. Um, uh, just he went out and and he's usually back by now that's all you know he probably just hooked into some some giant albacore out there or something to get it back in just you know i i, I just worry that's probably it there's probably nothing to worry about so, anyway. uh uh did you say that that shipment of uh coca-cola is coming in sometime this week if the road's passable but you know how it gets this time of year it gets so slick last last year they they went right off into the ditch and nobody said a word for days or yeah. came in here tracked mud all through the store and i couldn't get mad at him he had a hell of a walk uh you better look out i see a brother coming down the street he's heading for us oh ellis and the door opens. <laughs> hey, Doc. Howdy. Uh, hey. How you doing there, Bob? Margaret, my dear, how are you? Alice, how are you? Uh, I'm keeping out of trouble. <laughs> There's a first. <laughs> how is my dear sister? Eh, I'm all right. A little, getting a little worried about Dirk. He's been gone for a little while now on the boat, and I, I just... Usually I don't worry too much, but it's getting, it's kind of getting on, you know, it's almost lunch and I just really, I don't know, something feels funny this time. Hey, that husband of yours, he's more fish than human. He's out there more often than he's on land. Boy, sometimes he sure smells like it, I tell you. Woof. After a hard uh, You don't have to tell me that. <laughs> oh, Ellis. I don't know. I'm just worrying. That's all. It, it's nothing. I'm sure it's nothing. Well, don't stress yourself now, okay? We, you know. Well, we've been here before, you know. He's he's run a little long or whatever, and yeah, I got Bobby here. We've been we've been just talking and stocking and mm -hmm. doing the things we do. So yeah. 
Well, uh, uh, I, I just came around to, to check on you and see if uh, if you'd like to do, uh, maybe go get a meal later or something, catch up. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. And, you know, maybe I'll get my mind off a little bit. Yeah. Good hey, price. Bobby, you're, 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 uh, you're welcome to come. It's on me. Well, who's going to watch the shop? Bobby, it's not like we have a line around the door, around the corner right now. It's kind of. Well, I don't know. Any minute, fishermen could come walking in. <laughs> well, if you want to stay. Speaking of that, uh, do we have that new ship in the Coca Cola? I, it's I, not I, in yet. What did they put in that stuff? Because everybody wants it, and I can't get it up here just at a snap of a fingers. Well, as a doctor, I will tell you that it has very. Good health benefits. Oh, Ellis, you're full of poop. As we are all. <laughs> I I just walk in. Morning, Leon. Hey, Leon. Uh, Mr. Blake? Uh, Dr. Olson, Margaret, Bob, how you all doing? Uh, same old, same old. Uh, have you, um, Margaret, have you seen Duck around? Uh, no, he's still out on the boat. He's running a little late this morning. Uh, I want to talk to him because I'm planning on going out in a couple of hours. I thought he might want to uh, tag along, but if he's already out there, then yeah, I don't know if he's gonna pull a double like that. Uh, he's always working. Yeah, he is. You coming to stock up, Leon? Uh, yeah, might as well while I'm here. Well, before you even ask, the Coca-Cola has not shown up yet. That seems to be the hot commodity today. Oh, okay. It's I still don't. Under, I don't understand what they put in that stuff. It's so addictive. Thank you. Am I the? I thought I was the only one, Leon. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just uh, get all my bits that I need, and a bits are on aisle six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Margaret. Okay. Well, it's uh. It, it's not like Dirk, though, to be out this late, is it? He's usually here by breakfast. He's usually back. I well, when, when did he when did he head out? Uh, last night, I believe. He went, he, or before sunrise. You know how they are. They want to get out there on that water. Mm -hmm. He usually doesn't leave till first light, but he's only out several hours, and he'll come on back. I just don't, I don't understand. Yeah, and he, he usually drops by to see me before he goes out, We, but he didn't. <coughs> hmm. Was he, uh, was he drinking last night? Not any, not any more than usual, but not any less either. Just, but I mean, he was okay. He wasn't, he wasn't stumbling or falling around or anything like that. He had a couple before dinner and, uh, then after that he took a quick nap. And of course I fell asleep pretty close thereafter. And so I don't know if he woke up later that you know, later that evening and took off, or if it was uh, if it was early morning. I'm pretty sure it was last night, though. Now that I think about it, when I woke up, his boots were already gone. Hmm. Huh. It must have been last night. So he's been. Well, well, now I've done worked myself up into another worry. Well, I mean, do you do you know where, whereabouts he was headed? No, he don't ever tell me. Uh, he used to tell me all the time, but now, now it's almost got like that's his secret, his secret fishing holes, and he don't want me to go and and fish in the same holes as he does, because you know I'll go out there and I'll fish him right on right off the boat, is what I'll do. Or well, Leon, do you, do you have any idea where he'd be? Um, I don't, I don't know, but I I do know, that, oh, I do know that uh, sometimes. He likes to have a drink on the job, so he might have just got drunk, fallen asleep on his boat, and might be out there. You you do know that I mean, they stick pretty close. You know, they don't go more than a few miles out. Yeah, we should we should be able to see him really, unless the fog is as thick as I think it might be. Rolling in even worse as we sit here. You know how it is. Well, I guess I can look for him when I'm out there. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we go have a, have a go look out on the dock and and see if we can see any sign of him? And if we don't, we'll go grab some lunch over at the pub and uh, ask around and see if anyone who's maybe come in 
has uh, seen him out there or something like that. How about it? Rest your nerves a little bit there, Margaret. That sounds good. Bobby, last call. You going to come with us? No, I'll stay. All right. I'll, I'll watch the place in case something happens. Will you double check hey, uh, over on aisle four there and, and just make sure we get all those worked in, all that, that whole box of spoons and worms. Just get those worked into the shelf. I have played just absolute the dickens trying to get those up. It's okay. I'll take care of it. Okay. Um, I, I go over to, to Bobby and um, I slip him uh, just a, a, a pound, like a dollar note, and I say, uh, when that uh, when that Coca Cola comes in, put a put a crate aside for your old buddy here. Yes, sir, Doc. You guys and your darn Coca Cola. Good lord, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> well, they ought to just write that on the bottle. Coca Cola. <laughs> it's pretty damn good because that seems to be the thing. So you step out of the uh, the store. It's uh, it's still pretty foggy this morning. It's you can see that the sun is trying to burn its way through. Um, uh, the dock is just five hundred feet down the road. Um, you head down there. Uh, the water is choppy. Uh, there's a couple of other boats there. You can see that. Um, Leon's boat, uh, the Mistress of the Sea, is sitting there. Uh, the spot where Dirk parks his uh, boat, the Margaret, uh, it's it's not there. And there's a couple of deckhands and 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 people walking around the the dock. I just uh, need, we... I just need to go drop my stuff on my boat, and then I'll be back with you. Um, looking out, I mean, obviously there's fog. Can we see any sign out on the water of of the Margaret? No, you can only see out about 50 feet. Okay, so it's pretty foggy. Okay, yeah. um, I'll stop one of the one of the dock hands, um, and I say, uh, uh, well, yeah, I say, um, have you uh, seen Dirk Bentley by any chance? Uh, Dirk. Uh... Uh, well, he was uh, stumbling around here last night. I think he went out fishing. Well, when you say stumbling, would he was under the influence? Oh, well, you know Dirk. Hmm. I do know Dirk all too well. I um, mean, I give uh, I give Margaret a bit of a disapproving look, um, and I say, well, uh, well, 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 thank you. Um, is there anyone we could talk to that who's just maybe possibly just come in? Might have been out there. Uh, I don't know, just what you see. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, Tom Donaldson uh, was out here last night, uh, mm. I, but I saw him this morning. I'm surprised that Dirk didn't take him with him. You know, usually when he goes out, he takes somebody with him. Yeah, so he, he, he's out there by himself. Yeah, that's that's not a great idea. No, yeah, I mean I'm I'm only a doctor, but even I know that. Um, well, at least the weather's been okay. Hmm. Like today, the well, weather's just lovely. Well, uh, listen, if if you do hear anything, uh, it could just just send a someone up to the to the to the pub up there. Sure. Uh, we, we're gonna go grab some lunch. Just um, uh, Dirk's uh, old ball and chain here, Margaret, my sister is uh, she's a little worried about him. So any information would be greatly appreciated. I'm sure he's okay. Probably found yeah. some good fishing. Yeah, that's true. All right, so you walk back up the street to the, the pub. Hmm. Ball and chain, Ellis. <laughs> yeah. What are you drinking, Margaret? Everything at this point. Just to calm these nerves. You know, I... Actually, I think I'll have one of those It's Damn Good Coca-Colas. You got it. Um, and I'll go up, to, I'm going to go up to the, the bar as um, Margaret takes a, t you know, grabs a table and I'll buy her some drinks and, and order some food and stuff like that. Um, Paul Robertson runs the place. Hey, Doc, what do I get for you? Uh, uh, sister would like uh, one of them Coca-Colas. 
And Margaret. And uh, I'll, I'll take a double whiskey, thanks. Hey, All right. Uh, and um, we'll take two servings of uh, healthy servings of uh, f uh, fish and chips. You got it. I'll bring it right over. Thanks very much. And I'll go Bye. take a seat. Margaret. I will. I will also now go up to because I'll have walked in, dropped off some things, walked in. I'll go up, order whiskey and sure, pretty much same as them. So. And there's other people in here, you know. This time of, it's lunchtime. A lot of the people in in town, and once again, there's not very many people. Uh, if Can they I don't go home for uh, lunch, they come here. Can I see Tom, the guy that the doc had mentioned? Yeah, yeah, he's back there, sipping on a brew and. Eating some fish and chips. Sounds good. <laughs> hey, Doc. Hey, uh, Tom. Uh, just wondering if you've uh, you've seen or heard from Dirk today. Well, I saw him last night. Uh, I offered to go out out fishing with him, but uh, he didn't seem interested. He uh, he uh, he went out on his own. Hmm. That's that's not like Dirk. Well, it's not really that smart, but why is Dirk missing? Well, we were just we're, we're worried about him. He, he's normally back by now, but uh, Margaret's a little worried that he's uh, he's gotten drunk out there and fallen asleep, or well, heaven forbid, something worse. Well, if he fell asleep, you'd probably find his boat. Uh, stuck in a cove somewhere mm. on our coast either on our coast or on the Canadian coast um, uh, how did he seem last night no well, a little drunk he seemed uh, though in good mood you know he wasn't like depressed drunk uh, but he didn't want company not particularly no it's like he uh like he was, uh, I'd say, almost excited about something. Well, hmm. hey, Tom, did he, did he load his, did you notice if he loaded his boat up normally for fishing, or did he have any gear with him? Well, you know, I mean, most of his gear is already there, but come to think of it, it, it didn't look, it didn't look like he was taking his regular supplies with him. I mean, he had a he had a shovel. That was odd that he had a shovel. What? A shovel? Yeah, you know. Now that I think about it, it was a fucking shovel. Why would he be taking a shovel? Can I do like a, a, <clears throat> a history roll or something or, or something like that? To, like, if there's any legends in the area of like shipwrecks or something along those lines um yeah you wouldn't have to do any kind of uh role for that um there's all kinds of legends uh on the on the land side of Bravesport, it's almost all forest thick mm -hmm. overgrown forest um there's you know stories of the uh old indian tribes that lived in the area um but for the most part, the area is very fertile, very, very lots of fish. Uh, it's a good fishing area. Um, and, you know, there's always going to be a couple of stories of shipwrecks or, or things like that. But there's not a lot of industry in the area. So, mm. you know, there's no big ships that have ever crashed here. Now, if you, if you, leave, Grave, if you leave Gravesport and you head uh east uh i do believe you can go all the way to seattle yeah i'm sure you can but that's that's a ways yeah you know um most of the fishermen go you know right out into the bay the bay you know the area between uh canada and uh and washington right where we are right where you are right I think the gap, I can't remember, but I think the gap's like maybe five miles between the two. Um, and there, and it's deep. 
there aren't there aren't like any rocky mm. outcroppings there there are some along the coast but nobody goes there um but there are a lot of little coves so if his if if he fell asleep and his boat started to drift it would probably get stuck in a little cove and just either partially ground itself on a sandbar or you know yeah just be sitting there yeah or if something worse happened to him. stop it he'll be fine he'll be back yeah, uh, whoops. if you'll excuse me um i am going to walk back over to the bar and see if i can get a little something in this coca-cola because even though it is good I could use a little rum in it. Rum and coke. That's a that's a combination I would never have thought of. Let's try it. It's gonna be fantastic. I think. It's gonna be damn damn good. <laughs> All I know is that whatever's out there that had him so happy had better not have a pulse and walk around in high heels. Because that right now is where my mind is going, is that he took off out there to go see uh, 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 a lady. Uh, Paul behind the bar says, you know, Margaret, I don't think there's a pair of high heels for 500 miles in any direction. <laughs> well, I don't care if the bitch is barefoot. She better not be touching my dirt. <laughs> we'll find a Margaret, don't worry. You know, it, it almost makes me feel better to think that way and just turn turn my worry into anger. And then when I see him, and it'll all go away and I'll be fine. So just bear with me, I guess. And this drink's going to work. I, I think this will take the edge off a little. So it, it, am, I, am I the only doctor in town? Yeah. Yeah. And you all know everyone. So mm. and there's no strangers in this town. Um, so it gets to be about one o'clock and still no Dirk. That's, that's strange. Oh, I better be getting out soon. Um, I'm starting to worry a little bit then. Um, and I'm worried because, you know, I can see that Margaret's worried. Leon, how far out are you going? Uh, to the usual spots, just a few miles out. Just a few hours, maybe? Yeah, I'll be, yeah, I'll be, and plus I'll, I'll change spots here and there, so, um, I'll be out there for a good six hours or so. I almost want to go with you to see if I can get an eye on, see if we can see Dirk, I... Well, I don't usually go alone, so I won't mind the company. Ellis, you want to go fishing? Hmm... I'm just a little worried. I mean, I'm the only doc in town, but uh, I could really use your support in case we find what I'm one of the two things that I'm afraid may have happened. Okay, okay. Just and to what uh, you eat, you know, it's just I've just got to go via the the clinic and uh, and get get my my things. Because right, if you want let Bobby know, if he is hurt, then we may need you. That is true. That is true. Yeah, I'm gonna go yeah. uh, prep my bow. And I'm gonna I'll go to the my my clinic and and just get some get my doctor's bag and and my supplies and and, and so on and so forth and any uh I mean, plenty of stuff like first aiding and things. Right. Leon, do you need anything from the shop while I'm up there? Um, no, I picked up everything I needed to earlier, but you could get some snacks or something. We've also got night crawlers and wigglers. Yeah, yeah. Well, these are these are trawlers, so they use nets. <laughs> Big night crawlers. <laughs> Dull size. Yes. Yeah. It's all right. So, door, Tom. <laughs> so uh, within twenty minutes or so. Uh, you are all climbing aboard the Mistress of the Sea. And uh, Leon, you 
get everything ready uh, and you weigh anchor yeah. or whatever they do. <laughs> uh, don't don't touch anything. You you remove the rope from the cleats and uh, ding ding you uh, start up your boat. Uh, the nineteen twenties. Uh, it's actually a sailboat. Okay. Well, Leon, I guess I'll hoist the mainstay and, and the jib. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, just uh, be careful, especially you, Doctor. This is my first time on a boat, Leon. Thank you for your concern. Um, I just want to make a note that I, I would have let, like, Bob Bob and so on and so forth know that we were going out and that if we weren't back by a certain time to obviously um, send help and um, just so if anything happened back in town where I was going to be um, so they could come and get me. All right. Yeah, and you probably have an assistant, a nurse mm -hmm. who can handle most yeah. problems. Yeah. Um, yeah, you said clinic earlier. It's probably just a room in your house. Yeah, but I'd still call it a clinic, I guess. Yeah. Um, all right, so you travel out into the bay, and within a very short amount of time, uh, you are completely isolated. It is fog in all directions. Um, your visibility is maybe 100 feet mm -hmm. in all directions. And it's a little odd that the fog is hanging so heavy today it's not not completely unusual it's happened before but it does seem especially that the visit the, the visibility is not very good um after uh, a second hour and you've 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 gone along the coast uh to see if once again it's uh, the boats drifted into any coves um, you're, you're heading back out. You're going uh, west from Gravesport. And I'd like you all to do a listen roll. Yeah, I, I, 47, that's a pass. Uh, I, 98, that failed. Okay. Uh, Leon, as you're as you're standing there, uh, you vaguely hear what might be a bell or something like that. Um, a, a, a small bell. Um, uh, Margaret Ellis, do you do you hear that? It's just your what? It's an occasional little tink. And uh, as you guys are listening, as you guys now are all listening, um, off in the fog to your right, you can sort of hear a creaking noise. It sounds like a boat in the water. Uh, better go check that out. Right. Turn the boat. Okay. Well, as you head in that direction, um, uh, slowly as the fog begins to part, uh, you see the Margaret. Easy, Leon. I'm, it's coming in. I can see it. The sails are down, uh, and it's it's just sitting there in the water. Just Dirk. Dirk. There's no response. Um, let me just dock up beside it, and I'll... You two stay over here, I'll dock over and... Have a look. So that's what I do. I dock up and then step over. Okay. Um, Leon, do a spot hidden for me. Twenty-two out of fifty. You almost immediately notice that there is some damage. Uh, damage to part of the railing, and uh, some sort of yellowish goo on the on the deck itself something like you've never seen before um i kind of 
uh, get it in my fingers and sniff it. It smells bad. It smells very, very sulfury, uh, very, um, very fishy. You know. Very do I see him do that? Yeah. Uh, I just go, Leon. You probably shouldn't touch unknown substances and then shove it up your nose. Right. I'm um, just speaking from a medical standpoint. Right. Alice, Margaret, I don't want to alarm you, but there's an unusual substance here. It's yellow. It smells like sulfur, fish, fish almost, fishy almost. And the railings um, are a bit. Oh, how bad are the railings? Are they? Um, they're or? actually well. They're they're wooden. Um, there's a place where they're actually broken through. Okay. As if something heavy hit them. Damn. Yeah, they're, bro- they're, they're broken through. It's almost like something heavy hit them. This seems unusual. I don't. He shouldn't have come out alone. Why did he come out alone? It doesn't seem like he's here. Can I inspect the the substance? Are you going on board the ship? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll kind of make my way across. Um... And, and I want to go have a look at the substance. Okay. Um, you'd almost classify it as snot. I mean, it has that sort of consistency to it. Okay, um, I'm wearing gloves. But it's got a yellow, a yellow yeah. color to it. Um, vomit is like another thing that would look really close to it, except that there's, there's a fair amount of it. And it's going yeah. across the deck towards the uh, <clears throat> towards the uh, hold. Hold. Okay. And the break on um, in, on the, the the thing is that the breaks come like from someone on board falling off potentially, or something coming on. No, it's actually uh, it's about five feet wide. It looks like uh, as if something were to have crashed into it. Um, okay. The first thing that comes to mind would be a larger ship, maybe, that hit yeah, it yeah. sideways and smashed in the railing. Um, uh, I'll go check, like, in the hold area, and I'll, I'll go down. Leon, check before you go area. down there, is the anchor set? The anchor is not set. Um, Margaret, are you coming on board? Yes. I'm right. gonna go ahead and try to get on there, but I'm gonna hold on to the rail because this stuff is slippery. When you go over to where the anchor is, uh, the anchor is missing, and the rope. It almost you're not sure whether it's cut because uh, it's a little frayed, and there is yellow goo on the uh, the rope itself. Ellis, Leon, first off, we're not anchored, but I think he tried to anchor, and the rope broke, or, or, or something bit it in half. I don't know. Look at this. What the hell? What? What? The duck, man. Leon, the, uh, your fingertips where you touched the substance, they're burning. Damn. Fuck, 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 doc, doc. I mean, what, 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 what? Oh, the substance is burning my skin. Well, I told you that, um, Just do I have some, like, d- disinfectant or something in my... Probably like... not. Maybe you have some alcohol. Yeah, it's just some alcohol or something to kind of... Fuck. So I'll, I'll put some alcohol on some cotton and just clean up his hand where he touched the goo. Okay. Um, and then um, I'm assuming, would I have, like, spare gloves in my... Probably. Yeah, yeah, so I'll give both I'll give both of them. I'll say, like, here, wear these. Just don't, you know, now you don't have to, to touch all that sort of stuff. I said, look, we, we need to try and see if we can find Dirk and find out what's happened because well, it looks like there's damage to the to the ship and if the anchor's been... kind of looks a bit like it's been cut, the anchor. Um, I'll continue to go down into the hold. Okay. 
Um, Margaret, do an intelligence roll. Uh, 59 on 80. Okay. Yes. From your experience as a fisher woman, a fisherman's wife, a fisher wife, um, yeah, he wasn't fishing. All of the gear is still stored. He, The nets are on board. He wasn't fishing. Ellis. Ellis. Mm. Mm. Look. 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 Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. All what am I looking at? Stuff, all the fishing stuff is still right where it goes. So why would you come out if you weren't fishing? Why would you go fishing if you're not fishing, Alice? Huh. And there's how, no fish far, in the how far from land are we? Maybe four miles. Okay, so a decent chunk. Can I see the spade anywhere? Um, no. You don't see a shovel anywhere. Can I, inspe- can I inspect the hold a bit more? A bit closer? Yes. Um, there is evidence that wherever that yellow slime came from, it's down there too. It's not on everything, but um, it does seem to like follow a direction. It, it it's it's almost like it came, you know, the railing, and then it poured down the stairs, and got on the floor, and it's on on things around, but it's not on everything. Um, you find you find uh, um, his uh, bedding, and you know there's a cot down there, and there's supplies. Everything seems to be in order. Uh, do a spot hidden. Oh, why is it? 29. That's a pass. Okay. Um, there is a spot where this yellow goo is that looks weird. Like there are little marbles underneath the goo. Uh, Doc. Doc. Yeah, yeah. For you, Ellis. I can hear him. Um, come down here. I'm just go. I'm just gonna go to the top of the hole. Yeah. What? What can I do for you there, Blake? Come down here. There seems to be some like marbles or something like that. Don't touch them with your hands, Leon. It's all right. I, I gave the boy some gloves. Uh, all right. I'll. I'll. I'll you. You okay up here, Margaret? I'm fine. I, you know what? I'm just going to come down there with you. Well, Margaret, there's not there's not a lot of room. It's it's not that big of a boat for everybody to go downstairs at the same time. However, what are you hiding from me? <laughs> there there is you're on the back of the boat where the anchor is. There's still the front of the boat and the uh, the wheelhouse in the front. But then you know what? I'm going to the wheelhouse. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll go down and um, inspect these marbles. Well, it it definitely looks like little glass marbles. Um, they're they're covered in the goo, and there seems to be a pile of them on the floor. Um, each of them is, you know, little like this. Um, do a do an intelligence roll. Uh, 31 pass to hard. Yeah. Something about them reminds you like of frog eggs. Oh. That's what I was going to say. So I, I kind of, um, I'm picking them up with um, like some tweezers or something like that, something so I can kind of inspect them. And are they like, if I squeeze the tweezers, are they squishy? Are they like hard? All right. When you squeeze one of them with the tweezers, it pops like a like a puff ball, and yellow yeah. powder goes into the air. Do a con roll. 
Four. Pass. Should I do one as well? Yeah, you're standing there too. 98. Okay. I pop uh, it right next to Leon's face. <laughs> um, Margaret, uh, you go up to the, the wheelhouse. Uh, nothing seems unusual at first, except that you notice that there is a piece of paper uh, kind of jammed <clears throat> next to the compass. No. Gonna be rich, huh? 48, 32, 24, and more. Just give me one second as I think about this. At 125, 49, 12, west. 125, 49, 12, west. Now, without much difficulty, you can find that on the chart, and there is nothing there on the chart. Now, that's not where we're at right now, though. No. Hmm. It's about two miles further west into the ocean. Now, being so the, that I am a fisherwoman and fairly, fairly adept at navigation, and would it be reasonable to think that we could take this boat further if need be? Oh, sure. Okay, the the boat is still serviceable. Oh yeah. Okay, just checking. Maybe come in might come in handy later. Plus and you have the other ship. The other I don't, I don't smell any perfume up here, do I? No. Son of a bitch. Hmm. All right. So now do it on his chart. Did he map anything else out, like a route or, or possibly where he had been previously, or was it just the coordinates? Yeah, it's just a map. Yeah, the piece of paper has the coordinates. There's nothing written on his map. Okay, so he didn't actually chart a course. Correct. Okay. Okay. Hmm. But it would be pretty simple to find. Right. I just didn't know if he had already charted something that he had been to prior and came back, or if we were going forward, if he was if maybe he had stopped his journey on the way to the destination. Just laying out a timeline. Because the next thing I'm going to be laying out is his shit in the front yard. Well, theoretically, that the boat could have drifted from that position. That's true. But there's nothing out there. I mean, you know these waters pretty well. Alice? 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 Um, so I've just popped the, the the little puff ball, and I was like, oh, sorry about that. And then I hear Margaret yelling. I'll be like, uh, here, and I I help Liam back up to the top of the holding. Oh, sorry, I'm back to the, the deck and stuff, and... Uh, um, and um, I said, do, do you have any water or anything? Or what was that? I, I I don't know, but let's just I just <clears throat> splash some water on your face and Should have a drink. Some water over. <clears throat> so I, I get him some water to just to kind of clean his face a little bit and and maybe drink something. Um, okay. And I'm like, I'm I'm I'm, I'm coming, Margaret. <sighs> I'll be I'll be right back, Leon. I'm I'm coming up too. I follow Alice. All right. Yeah. Now you don't find any evidence of foul play, but so far all you found is what you found, and and there's the ship's not that big, so you don't really find much else. <clears throat> Do you show us the coordinates and stuff? Yeah, I'm gonna get to that. I was just letting him talk, Ellis. Jesus Christ, use some little manners. <laughs> the voice from above. Sorry, Margaret. Jesus. <laughs> so anyway, up in the wheelhouse, this was crammed in between, but right beside the compass, and it's just coordinates. It's forty-eight, thirty-two, twenty-four, one twenty-five, forty-nine, twelve west. But I'm gonna tell you, there is not a damn thing out there. It's just open. It's just open and barren. There's nothing. 
there's not an island with little palm trees or anything else. There's just nothing out there. I don't know why. And he said, I'm going to be rich. And that's what was written on there. Yeah, you would agree with that, of course. Yeah. You know the water's really well, too. I mean, there's just nothing out there. Is it, I don't know what he found, but it's not that far from here. Maybe a couple of miles. Maybe maybe someone scammed him or something, but we know everyone. We know yeah. everyone. Does this well, mean, explain, does this... it explains why he didn't want anyone to come out with him, because if he thought he was going to get rich, he, he didn't want to share it with anyone. Yeah, and it explains that shovel if he's going to dig up a buried treasure. That, that But there's no land. There's nothing out there. How how good a swimmer is is Dirk? You're fisher people. You're all really good swimmers. <laughs> yeah, he's as good as the rest of us. So. Of course, if he was drunk, swimming and drinking is not a good combo. Yeah, I tell you, I've had yeah. got enough of this bad mouth and Dirk. He is not that bad of a drunkard. Right. Well, let's take let's take Leon's boat over to the spot because when we can't there's no point in taking this boat because we can't well, anchor well i hate to leave it just drifting because it's going to drift now we had well, there's well maybe margaret if you because you know how to operate if you operate this or valis and i'll operate mine and we stay side by side as best as we can i guess that would be acceptable i i, I can do that yes and obviously i can shout over if it looks like you're struggling now, Leon, I'm not going to struggle for crying out loud. I'm just a damn good pilot of this ship as you are. I'm just not, saying. Not more so, because I don't let my little sailor take the wheel all the damn time. Uh -huh. now, you gentlemen have just about pushed me to my limit. What did I do? Ellis, <laughs> I've had it. I've had hey. it. Let's get going. I want to find this because he might be there. That might be where hey, he's at. And he hey, got Margaret. so excited that he let the boat go. You know Margaret, what? I'm, I'm on a I'm on a rant right now, Leon. Mar don't don't stop me. Now, Margaret, Margaret, I understand, but I've got to I've got to ask because uh, Doug's not exactly the best sometimes. And if you learn from him, then you know you might now, not I've be already, that. Good. I've already warned you once. <laughs> talking bad about my Dirk. Especially when we haven't even found him, and he may be in a bad way. Hey, I take out my uh, I take out my hip flask and take a swig and go and sit down. You, you, Margo, you 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 know me. You know mine and Dirk's relationship. We're always going off on each other, but we're still buddies. I know. Let's go know. find him. Let's go. He'll, find him. he'll be fine. All right. So, uh, Ellis, uh, Doctor Ellis, which boat are you on? I'll stick with Margaret. Okay. So Margaret and and uh, the doc, uh, and you're heading towards those coordinates. And yeah. Leon, you're following or you're leading the way. You're you're side by yeah, side. I'll yeah, I'll be. I'll kind of be leading the way. I'll be a little bit ahead. But. And for those listeners who are familiar with sailing, however weird this sounds, that they're sailing and they're managing to stay. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. You just don't imagine it, um, you know, creative life. Okay? Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, you sail for about an hour, and you imagine that you should be getting close to the area. It's very foggy. In fact, it's gotten even foggier as you've been going, but you're staying close enough together that uh, that you can see, you can see each other. You know you have lanterns on the boat um, to cut through the fog. Well, it doesn't really cut through the fog, but you can see the lights from from each other's boat. Be careful, Margaret. It's getting a bit foggier. I shot over. Thank you, Leon. Don't stray too far away. Keep it up, Leon. <laughs> um, how long have we been out? Probably about three hours now. Okay. We've got about another three hours before they start to worry on the land. I'm almost starting to worry about the sun, though, because we're, we're kind of... We, we're not going to have too many more hours of sunlight. So no, no, no we, late. Left, we left at about 1.30, 2 o'clock, so yeah, we're, we're pushing we're it. Pushing and it's forward. already hard to see. Four or five o'clock, and this fog's going to eat up any kind of remaining sunlight that might happen. Yeah. Plus, Leon over there is 
wanting to stick his finger in all kinds of weird things and shove them all in his nose and eyes. There's no telling how much longer he's going to go without just pushing himself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I did think that was quite, as soon as he did it, I just was like, Talking well, he's going to be in an early grave. Talking about my Dirk in a negative way. And as well, you guys I, are, I can still hear you, you know, <laughs> as you guys are sailing and bickering, um, all of a sudden, ahead of you, out of the fog, looms up black and ominous an island. It's all rocky. It's uh, it's you're you're obviously approaching a small coastline. Land ho, Leon. The hell? What you call me? <laughs> oh, Ellis. This, um, Margaret, this isn't meant to be here. Do a spot hidden, all of you. 56, that's a fail. Uh, 37, I got a pass. 37. Dr. Ellis, you almost immediately notice that there is no plant life growing on this rock. The rock is black. Um, Like obsidian? Looks a bit like obsidian. No, no, it's not, not that black, but it's, uh, maybe granite or something like that but it's a dark granite um it's very because of the fog it's all wet Mm. um but you don't see any vegetation of any kind and you're not seeing the whole island you're just seeing a little corner that's popped out of the fog in front of you yeah unless you see anywhere we could we could pull these boats up and maybe maybe tie them off since i don't have an anchor uh, do I? Well, be a little tricky, because you don't know what the if there's if the water goes down, you know, deep enough or yeah. Um, and also, I'm pretty. If I I don't know exactly what the substance of the rock is, I'm cautious about touching it and us being on it, and because as as we've said, it's not meant to be here. Maybe we should do a lap around, see how big. It yeah, is. let's 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 do a let's quite see how quite big this this rock is. See if we can see anything. Take us around, Margaret. Yes, sir, Mister Ellis. <laughs> oh. Well, as you start moving along the coastline, um, there's not much curve to it. This could be quite a bit bigger than what you are imagining. This is a substantial island. You you sail along for 15 minutes and you're still going along the coast. Do a spot hidden for me. How the hell have we never seen this before? Uh, six, 16, that's the pass. 92. I can't get other names. Leon, as you're looking at the coastline, you suddenly notice at a certain spot there is a bit of broken railing. Oh, guys, over there, that must be uh, the railing from the, your boat. These coordinates Look, match. It looks like you might be able to anchor the boat there and climb up over the onto the rocks. Yeah. Can we? Can we? It definitely looks possibly... like a piece of railing from the Margaret. Can we tie the ships together and then anchor Leon's boat? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I reckon that's the best uh, way to do that. Have you guys got any more water over there? I'm goddamn thirsty, man. Leon, we're in boats. There's water every damn where. Just look at it. Nah, it's just. All I keep around. drinking. I'm still thirsty, man. Fine. I think there's some water in the. It, it, Ellis, he usually keeps. He usually keeps a canteen. Uh, just back there. Under, pick up one of the little seat cushions, and it should be underneath there. Okay, and I, I go and lift one up, and it's just full of Coca Cola. <laughs> Here, have one of these. <laughs> Throw uh, the, the, a bottle of it. Ah, nice, refreshing Coca Cola. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you drink that back, and it, it quenches your thirst. Um, for a couple of minutes. Um, well, it seems like we can get on the island. Maybe um, I should go 
over first and you two wait here. Okay. I've got my, uh, I'll take my shotgun with me just in case. Why would you need a shotgun? You don't have a shotgun. <laughs> it, says, it says I have a shotgun. Does it say you have a shotgun? Yeah. You have a shotgun. <laughs> He says I have a shotgun and a fire axe, apparently. Look at him, Alice. He's like a pilgrim. A fire axe on a boat. <laughs> in case you're going bear hunting out in the ocean. Um, Who knows? I've just got my shotgun. I'll all right. Over. So, Leon, you step... You, you Well, you can't really step. Uh, you more or less have to anchor your boat and then do a bit of a leap onto the rocks. Um, do a dex roll. Yeah, let's watch this. Oh, <laughs> oh no. What is... <sighs> I got 69 out of 70. <laughs> Good. All right. So you hit the rocks, and when you do, they are very slippery, and uh, you almost tumble into the ocean, but you manage to grab a hold of the edges. and Jesus Christ. But the edges are kind of sharp. The rocks are are sharp, mm. uh, which isn't that unusual for you know sea rocks with barnacles and stuff on them. So do do a hit point of damage to your hands when you, when you grab. Them. You're pretty rough though. It could have been worse if you were a landlubber. Yeah. Uh, uh, fuck me. Be be careful if you two come over here. But what if it's safe? I'll check on it. Hey, uh, Leon, Leon, you, you, you sure you're feeling okay? You, you don't look so good. Um, I'm fine. It's just, I just get so thirsty for some reason. But uh, I'm fine. You two stay over there. I'll be, I'm back. I'll just go for a walk. And I, I look at Margaret and I shrug and, and I light my pipe and sit down and wait. Leon, you can see that it's very rocky, very rough. Um, uh, and it from the coastline, it keeps going up fairly steeply. Um, but there's a lot of handy holds. Okay. Um, so when you are you know, 20 or 30 feet away, uh, you can see that it's at least the area right there is leveling out a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Margaret and Dr. Ellis, what are you guys doing? Well, I was just telling Ellis here that Leon is not the most dexterous. De de <laughs> He's not the most athletic son of a bitch in the fish and village. And I was very disappointed that he didn't fall right into the ocean. That's what we were just doing. But I tell you, Ellis, I don't think we ought to let him run up there by himself because whatever... I got a feeling that something came off of here, crashed onto this boat, snatched that anchor loose, and that this boat actually drifted from here, and I think Dirk is on this island. Uh, okay. Um, and I'm, I, I'm a little worried about how Leon was looking. He was looking a little, a little pale, maybe a little bit perspiring, a little bit. Um, so I'm like... Wow. So what you're telling me, Margaret, is is you want to go on the island. Right. I want to go on the island. Um, I want to find Dirk. Is there like a like a plank or anything that I can put across from the boat to thing to maybe make it easier to cross? Um, yeah, there probably is. The only problem being is that the boat's in the water. So it's it's still going to be doing this when you're trying to. Yeah, cross. no, but I can try and steady it for Margaret. Is what I'm like. I can set it up, and then I can try and hold it from one end and steady it for Margaret, and then she can <clears throat> do the opposite on the other side once she's across. Okay. Um, and I'll take a swig of my whiskey before I do so. Okay. So Margaret, do a dex roll. At 63 on 70. Okay. With my sea legs. Mm -hmm. So with a little wobbly in your sea legs, yeah, you managed to scramble up onto the rock. 
Um, then Dr. Ellis. Um, I got a... Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't pass. <laughs> All right. So uh, Dr. Ellis uh, starts across the plank and uh, uh, it slides to the side. And to Dr. Ellis, uh, you you tumble off into the water. Oh, wow. hail. Oh, hails, bales. Let's... Ellis. I'm going to try to reach out and grab a hold of him. Leon, you hear the splash and you hear the yelp. What the fuck? I, I, I start to climb <sighs> back down. Water's cold! Water's cold! <laughs> I start to, yeah, I'll climb back down as quickly as I can. Water is really cold, guys. <laughs> well, now, Ellis, there is there is a uh, ladder on the side of the boat. Yeah, so I, I'm going to climb back up the the, uh, the onto the boat. Okay. Give it another try, Ellis. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I, I'm good. I think I'll uh, I'll stay here. I'll, I'll hold the fort. You guys. Oh, you I, shot, I shot down. Ellis, are you okay? I'm fine. I just just a little wet. That's fine. Do you have any, uh, got any, some spare clothes in here, Leon, I could change into? Um, yeah, of course. I always bring a spare fisherman outfit. Uh, uh, fine, so I'll, I'm going to go into the, the wheelhouse on Leon's boat and change into, I'm guessing, like a pair of corduroy pants, one of those big woolly jumpers, you know. Yeah. Get out of my wet clothes. And they just happen to be in your size, so... Well, hang on, what size um, is Leon? Plus there's... Pl- plus there's I, no, it'll probably be a bit bigger on you. A bit bigger. Um, all right, so... What size are you, Leon? I'm actually not as big as I thought I was. I'm 60. I'm a 70, so it'll be a bit tight on me. Yeah, it'll be tight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Still better than wet clothes. Yes, yeah, so an hour later we go back to uh, Dr. Ellis still trying to put the the pants, the belt, the thing together. <laughs> yeah. um, Just get a bit of rope and... All right, so, so uh, Margaret and Leon, uh, you're on the shore. Um, what do you guys want to do? Dr. Ellis is on the boat. I'd like to look around and see if I see uh, Dirk's shovel or anything that lets me know that he's walked through this way. Okay. Um, as I said, it's rough and it's rocky and the rocks are at odd angles and um, it almost looks more like a pile of boulders and rocks um, and oddly they're not smooth you know they're not uh, they're not worn over like you would expect sea rocks to be uh, they're pretty sharp um Margaret and uh, Leon do spot hidden since you're walking around. Fail. Hard pass, 22. Okay. So you're walking around, and you do, in fact, confirm what uh, Dr. Ellis noticed was that there is no vegetation. There's no plants. Um, There's nothing like that. Although you do notice in places around the edges of the island, there's chunks of seaweed that may have been splashed up from the the ocean onto the rocks. Uh, But they look fairly fresh. They don't look like old and and dry. Um, You wander up maybe a hundred feet from the, the, the sea and you notice that the island rises up maybe another 200 feet or so, uh, almost like a volcanic island, and that there's something very odd about the shape of it. It doesn't look quite natural. There's too many right angles and too many... It, it vaguely looks like a building, except that it's it's definitely rock that you're standing on. And Margaret, uh, since you've had a good roll, uh, as you're looking around, you notice over poking out from behind a rock is the blade end of a shovel. Oh. 
Leon, I think... Leon, I think I have something here. What is it? I, I walk over. It's... Well, I, I think it's the blade end of a shovel. It's just behind these... Just a little ways over, behind these rocks. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it out. No, you... I'll well, pull it out. when you take a few steps towards the, the shovel, and you sort of come around a boulder to see it, there's a body lying there, face down. Oh, oh God. And it's Fuck. dressed like Dirk. Margaret, look away. Margaret, look away. Well, I've already seen it now, Leon. And I'm going to move over to it, and I want to grab a hold of it and say, Dirk? Dirk? And I turn the head towards me as best as I can. Dirk's head, his face, his skin, it's like leather. It's gaunt. It's desiccated as if the water had been sucked out of it somehow. Sanity bowl. I'm assuming me too, because I Yes, you too, because you're standing right there. Yeah. 33 on 60. I got a a zero, zero, zero. All right, Leon. (laughs) Uh, Margaret, you're going to take two points of damage. Leon, do a 1d6. Okay. Six. Holy crap. (laughs) (laughs) And you're the fisherman. (laughs) Do an intelligence roll. Okay. Up, up, up past the intelligence roll. You pass. (laughs) Yeah. Good. I know it's not good. Me. Uh, that was a good roll wasted as well. <laughs> um, I think uh, do a do a 1d10 okay I nearly had to look from a d10 and then realize it's I'm sorry 1d8 sorry okay d8 seven okay you begin to lose your sense of balance you have to sit down and you 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 feel dizzy and you feel disoriented uh, margaret uh. uh dr ellis back on the boat you hear leon yell <laughs> he he yelps and i'm screaming, i'm screaming for ellis to get up here Oh, Margaret, God. Alice, put on your ocean leg and let's get it. Get up here. Get up here. I found Dirk. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, quickly look around the boat and find Leon's uh, fire axe. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna get to the jump across, and I'm gonna pull out my hip flask, and I'm gonna. I could drink and I guess have another go with this one. Okay. Okay. Dr. Ellis, do a con roll. Con roll. 15. Pass. Okay. So you're not that drunk. <laughs> but um, hey, I'm just, just double checking because um, there's a thing. It says if I take a swig, I get a bonus dice. Okay. Um, <laughs> On my character sheet. That's why I kept drinking. I was like, <laughs> I need this. Okay. Maybe on your sand rolls, we'll see. All right. Okay, go. Cool. Let's just say that you managed to get across the uh, okay. The, okay, sweet. the thing. And you, you head up towards where Margaret is. Uh, you see Leon. Leon is is sitting on the ground. Um, uh, you can see that he's visibly shaking. Okay. Uh, he looks very pale. All right. I'm going to go over to Leon and look into his eyes, see if his pupils are dilated, and, and check his pulse and his heart rate, and so on and so forth. Ellis, um, Ellis, what's going on with me? Yeah, uh, and then I'm like, here, here, take a swig of this, and I give him a bit of my, my whiskey. I grab it off him. I grab the whole whiskey and start to... It's just a flask. <laughs> just, yeah. Um, somehow, yeah. Leon, the whiskey kind of bothers you. 
okay? It kind of bothers you. It it dries out your mouth, and your mouth feels very dry. Uh, um, Dr. Ellis, do a medical roll. Okay. Uh, I need water. Dr. Sorry. Uh, I mean, sorry, Dr. Margaret. Uh, Margaret, do a spot hidden. Pass. Just a standard pass. I need water. Um, Dr. Ellis, you notice that Leon's eyes are very yellow. Margaret, like, at the like same jaundice. time... Yeah, like jaundice. Uh, Margaret, you notice that all around Dirk's mouth and nostrils is kind of a yellowish powder and little blisters on his skin. Alice, you, look at this. you also notice that laying next to one of his hands, which is kind of splayed out on the ground, is something gold. Alice, look at this. What I, is it? I, I'm trying to... Up. I need I'm water. Up. Look at him. Um, and so I'll have a look at, um, I'll have a quick look at, at Dirk. So this is the first time I'm seeing Dirk. Right. Do I have to do a sand yeah, roll? do a sand roll, but that yeah. should get an extra, you get a bonus dice because you're a doctor. I need water. Um, that's what the thing laying on the ground looks like. I'm so yes, goddamn, that's a pass. So goddamn thirsty. Uh, I oh, pass my sanity yeah, roll. Just, just take two points of damage. Uh, sand. Okay. Margaret, have you got any water, Margaret? No, any... Leon, I don't. I'm sitting here with my dead husband in my hands. The last thing I'm worried about is whether or not you have a goddamn piece of water. I'm so now, Just to clarify, I'm still wearing I'm still wearing my gloves. Um, I'm gonna check Dirk's eyes. Okay. They are very yellow. And in fact the eyeball itself seems to have shriveled up like shriveled like okay and the powder that i'm seeing on the face mm -hmm. doesn't look the same as the powder that popped out of the bead yeah kind of um okay i'm gonna i'm gonna look back at leon and go leon we're, we're gonna help you just just stand there and then i'm gonna pull margaret aside and i'll say margaret hmm? I, I think whatever whatever dirk was dealing with the powder stuff around his face Leon got some in his system when we were back on the boat. There, there, there was a bunch of these beads down in the hold. We popped one of them, and and this powder came out. And Leon, I, I think, I think we they could be. Can, it, we need to contain this. It could be a virus of some kind. You and I need to go now. God damn thirsty. So thirsty. You think? You think Leon's going to end up like Dirk? I, I, I don't have the equipment here with me to help him, and we run the risk of infecting ourselves and then the other people in the town if we try and take him back. Alice. The best thing I can do is to get back there, send people to come and, and, and get Leon and get Dirk, but something that we can use to contain them, and then get them back. There's, did you see the gold thing on the ground? Not, not to change the subject, but I am purposely trying not to look at Leon right now. Um, and I'll sort of glance back over to see if I can see the, the gold thing she's talking about. Yeah, there's a an odd car thing lying there on the ground. It's about that big. Um, it, it almost looks like a key. But a very weird looking key. Uh, Dr. Ellis and Dr. and, and Margaret do uh, spot hidden. My good old 97s. What a uh, 38, which is uh, just a standard regular pass. Well, uh, Dr. Ellis, at first you're looking over at Margaret into her eyes. You've looked at the, the key. And as you're looking beyond her, mm. you can see that the rocks kind of form steps going up and in the side of what looks almost like maybe a pile of rock or a boulder there's definitely a door 
Like you'd see um, on an old building, not a wooden door. It looks like a stone door. I'm going to turn Margaret and I say, what does that look like to you? It looks like, it looks like stairs and a door. But it's weird. Not, it just looks like stairs. And then I look back at the gold thing. Um, he said, looks like a key. And uh, I'm going to walk back over and I'm going to pull like my handkerchief out. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna pick up, I've got gloves on and the handkerchief and I'm going to pick up the gold. And I was like, Leon, Leon, you just, just take it easy, okay? Just sit there, no, take it easy. I can stand up now. I'm fu- I'm no, just, no, take it easy, need, Leon. Just, I just, just need a drink. Well, just, go, go back. Just, just, just sit there, okay? We're gonna get your help. We just need to check something. Just, just take it easy, okay? You, you're not well. I'm fine. I'm just thirsty. Uh, Doctor Ellis, it, it is very heavy. Okay. You pick it up. Uh, two hands. I mean, you're. I mean, you, well, it, you don't have to use two hands, but your immediate guess is that it's solid gold. Wow. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try not to show my kind of acknowledgement, uh, astonishment of that as I sort of pick it up and I'll be like, um, Margaret, uh, c- come with me. And I'm, I'm going to go up the stairs to what looks like the door. I'm going to follow them. <laughs> okay. Um, doctor, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Leon, I'm just going to make you all doctors from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Leon, uh, do a, um, a, a dex roll. Okay. Oh, 30. That's the pass. I'm pretty Okay, sure. so you don't yeah. stumble. You stumble a little bit, but you don't fall fall mm-hmm. down. Uh, but you're a little behind them, so they're, they're, they're up ahead of you. Yeah. Um, uh, Dr. Ellis and Do- and uh, Margaret. I'm still going to say Dr. Margaret. Um, <laughs> if you're related to a doctor, that makes you a sort of a doctor, right? <laughs> oh, that's how that proxy doctors. I don't know. So you go up to the you go up to the the, the steps, and uh, you can see that this flat spot in the rock it's a little oddly shaped. It's not perfectly rectangular it's 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 a bit oddly angled that there are carvings in the the rock itself you thought it was just a texture but there seem to be figures and odd very strange that almost looks like fish but they have arms and legs like some sort of monster or you're not sure what and there are it looks like they're standing around piles Um, it's not clear maybe they're boulders but there's like little things that are flat on the bottom and then mounded up like this and they they if you were guessing they were characters in a picture but these also would be characters in this this picture that's sort of carved into the into the whole thing and it it seems to like like everything is facing towards the center of the door and in the center of the door is carved something very much like an octopus or a squid it has multiple arms going out in kind of a symmetrical sort of way Um, and there is a hole of that big but thin in the center of this figure Um, so I'm holding the the thing and and, uh, I turn to Margaret and say I, I think this is maybe what Dirk was looking for. Which means potentially whatever is behind this is what killed him. Ellis, is Leon close enough to hear us? 
Um, if we wait too long, yes. Yeah, yeah, he will be in a couple seconds. Maybe we should have him open it just in case. Um, yeah, so as as uh, Leon comes up, I'll be like, Leon, here, take take this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna carefully hand him the the um the golden uh what we assume is a key. Um Leon, you uh, also immediately realize how heavy it is. That's that's very heavy. You know this okay, try put it put it in that hole, Leon. Maybe weighs five pounds in your hands. Oh god. Um, um you two step back, I don't know. Good uh, idea, Leon. Uh, so thirsty bro. And I'm I'm gonna raise the, the fire axe a little bit just to like uh, all right, and I put it in. All right, so Leon, you you put it in, and you can feel that uh, that it it you almost have to wiggle it up and down to get it to go all the way in, and when it does, there's a definite click, as if it's in place. So it's in. I see my twist it or something. I don't know. Okay, you try to twist it. And you can feel that it, it takes some force, but in fact, it twists. And when it does, it suddenly sucks the key kind of out of your hand, and the key goes into the wall. And when it does, the wall moves away from you about half a foot, and then moves kind of to the side. And you can see that there's a long black tunnel I have my shotgun out. Point off and downward into the, the heart of the island. Uh, Margaret and Dr. Ellis. Now, you guys are facing the, 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 the thing. Mm. Um, Leon, do a spot hit. 43, which is a pass. All right. Yeah. Uh, when the thing opens... You you look in for a second and then you turn back and you look at uh, at Ellis and Margaret standing behind you. And when you do, you notice that down on the rocks closer to the coast, there is a mound of something yellow, like seaweed, but it's the same color as that stuff around his mouth that's the same color as that slime and you're not sure but you think it's moving um, guys behind you up down there it's like, is, it, is it moving you yellow? See it. it's like a slug what the fuck is it coming towards us well, it's it's moving along the path rather slowly, but it's it's easily bigger than one of you. What the fuck is it? It's, How far away is it from us now? It's it's about two hundred feet away. I mean, you're just seeing it down there moving, but it's definitely moving towards the path that you guys followed up. You two stand back. Get behind me. Margaret and Ellis do a, a spot hidden. Um, uh, I've got a 56, which is a pass. Okay. Dr. Ellis, as you're looking, uh, you now notice that there is another one, and it's over there, maybe 50 feet from the other one, and not where the path is, it's on the rocks, but it looks like it's moving this direction, too. Okay, I think, I think we've got two options. We can either go down this hole, or we can try and make a run for the boat. There's only one path, isn't there? No, wait. I can. I'm well, it's sick. all I rocks. Can... You could scramble over the rocks, but 
I'm sick. If I try to hope, if I can shoot at them, I don't even know if it'll work, but you two get back to the boat. Or you can't go down in the tunnel if you really want to. We don't have really time to discuss whether or not to open the door or not. <laughs> I'm going to run down the tunnel. Alice, come oh, on geez. with me if you want. Bye. Yeah. Uh, so oh. she's, she's run off and I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And so I'm going to chase after. Um, I'll, I'll obviously back up into the tunnel if I see them going into the tunnel. Okay. So, are, uh, Leon, are you following them or are you just standing in the entrance? I will, I will be following them, but I'll be going at a slower pace than they are. Okay. Uh, Margaret, you went first. Yes, I did. All right. Uh, it almost immediately becomes almost pitch dark. Uh, but uh, do a... Well, let's call it a spot hidden pull out first. The way these stop rolling, the stop rolling in the nineties. <laughs> I, I was about to say the way these things have been going tonight, I it's not going to matter what kind of roll it is. Thirty-seven. Thank Her you. That is a <laughs> regular pass on a spot hidden. You have been in sea caves before. They occur naturally. This tunnel is smooth, as if it were melted through the rock in a straight line. There's no twists, there's no curves, there's a gentle passage downward. Hmm. Um, and it just suddenly strikes you as bizarre, bizarre beyond anything that you you witnessed before. You do a sanity roll. Actually, all of you can do sanity rolls. Now, am I rolling my... I, I, I'm Because it's pitch black, I'm running my hands down the side. Correct. I'm, I'm afraid that I might have gotten... Am I feeling the goo on my hand? No. Okay. The rock does feel smooth and, and damp. And and I gave, I gave you gloves back when we were on the boat. But I didn't put them on, Alice. I didn't think it was necessary. Yeah. I, I passed the sanity roll. I mean, let's just be honest with ourselves. Am I really going to put anything on that you just hand me? No. That's how you got clothes on right now that don't even fit you. Well, I had to. I, I couldn't stay in the wet clothes, damn and it. it was, and it's a 97 on the sanity. Am I taking sanity as well? Yeah. Yeah. Leon, uh, just take one 29. point of damage. Uh, Alice, take one point of damage. Margaret, do, uh, uh, do a 1d4. Wait, I'm sorry. Do an intelligence roll first. Oh wait, no, 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 no. I'm doing it. I'm doing it backwards. Yeah, do a one d four. Two. Okay, you take two points of damage. Um, and now what are you doing for light? Because there is no light except the light that's coming through the tunnel, way off in the distance, and that's pretty gray. Um, I can use my lighter. Okay, that's not um, going to get better. And I, I can try... Um, <clears throat> um, I'm trying to think. Would I have anything like... Um, in my bag that I could use as like, like a makeshift torch? Hmm. Probably, well, you probably have bandages. However, there's no wood or anything like that, and you don't have any fuel. You have um, alcohol, but alcohol yeah. burns. It, it's almost invisible. It would yeah. Be any light. I've got whiskey. I don't know if whiskey burns that that brightly. It's. I, uh, I honestly don't know. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but in any case, as Margaret, as you're moving forward you can see actually that there seems to be something luminescent up ahead you might be coming out the other side that might, might be uh you know light from the sky or something shining in there but it's very blue the light up ahead ellis there's a really neat light down here just keep moving it should be nice and smooth <sighs> Okay. 
How could you be tired at a time like this? We're in a smooth cave. So quit yawning and let's move. I, I didn't sleep well last night. Oh my God. I swear. All right. So yeah. as you move forward, Margaret, uh, Dr. Ellis, you've caught up. You're, you're right behind her. Leon, mm -hmm. you are now right behind them. Uh, but there's not enough room in the tunnel to walk side by side, just one at a time. Uh, Margaret, you suddenly step out into uh, a cavern. Uh, you're on a cliff. Um, and uh, the cliff extends out maybe, oh, 10 feet ahead of you. Uh, Semi-circular. And it's it it almost gives you a feeling like uh, like being on a balcony in a cathedral, because the room is is huge, and in the center of the room looks like maybe it's carved out of rock. Is for all intents and purposes an egg, but it's an egg that's maybe thirty feet high and 15 or 20 feet wide at the base. And the egg itself is glowing, this kind of bluish light. You also notice that there is a kind of a table right in front of you. Um, and on the table are symbols that are carved into the, uh, the tabletop. The tables maybe three feet wide by two feet deep. It's more or less just a block that's flat block with these symbols. The symbols also are glowing slightly. Do I, do I recognize these symbols at all, or are they just the most foreign things I've ever seen? Looks like it, it doesn't look like a, uh, any, anything you've ever seen. Odd, odd, strange squiggles of lines. Is that is that is the block or the table there? Is it part of the cliff? The whole thing yes. carved in one yes. piece. It looks like it's all carved from one piece. Ellis, look at this. Leon, how did you get down here so quick? Get over here and look at this. You guys, look at this. I'm coming. I'm coming. It's an egg. You're an egg. It's a glorious egg. Look at it glow. Hey, Margaret, don't touch it. It's 30 feet out into the middle of nothing, Leon. There's no physical way I can touch it. Yeah, you well, couldn't actually get to the egg. Okay. Can't you, you see? Drop, drop down. Yeah. Phil. Phil, uh, we need to get out of here. I'm sorry. I'm going to kick something it's... off, um, just like a rock or something off <clears throat> into the abyss to see how far okay. down again. There are no loose rocks. As I say, it's as if this has been melted out of the rock. It's very smooth. There's no gravel or a little bit of dust. I have some coins in my pocket that you could drop. I'll have yeah, some... just, yeah, yeah, just take a deck it, take a coin and just okay. fling it off. Make a yeah. wish, Alice. It's a long way wish down. Wish I was off this damn island. The egg thing is, it seems to be setting on some sort of a platform coming up from the, the the bottom of the cavern, but the cavern is definitely at least 50 feet below you, and maybe 50 feet above you. Is it rock wow. at the bottom, or is it water at the bottom? It looks like it's all rock all the way around. Goodness. And um, do a spot hidden, everybody. Who's standing there. What the hell, man? I got a five. It's beast or famine. I got a three. Forty-seven. Damn! I still passed. Well, Margaret, first then, <clears throat> you begin to notice that the cavern you're in, it's not just rock, that all of it is carved with intricate carvings of what look like fish people and octopus people and all sorts of things all around you dolphins and uh it it literally is like a gigantic cathedral of some sort wow. but there is no other place to go 
There's no handy holes. There's no climbing down. And those things are still coming, you guys. Those wires. Better move them fast. Is there any way we can get them to come down and then try to get around them? To run back up? It was just a single file. Remember, we couldn't even walk side by side in this tunnel. Yeah, but I'm saying once they come in the room. They're so much bigger than we are. Well, that's true. They were huge. Surely they haven't made it to the entrance yet. And if we quickly run up there, we could quickly get down. Or you two could not hold them off. Um, no, I'm gonna go look. I'm gonna look up the passage and see if I can see anything coming down. All you can see is a, fa a vague dot of light off of the. Can I see any movement in the? No. <clears throat> um. If those things were like giant sea slugs or something like that, you imagine it would take them quite a while to climb up to where you think the door was. But if they are doing that, they're getting they're getting closer. They Damn it! Why'd you come down here, Margaret? Got to make a decision. Everybody do power rolls. Forty-seven. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say, can I can I spin luck? Yeah, fifty-eight on sixty. A regular pass. I failed. Um. No, Doctor Ellis. Councilman, I failed in by four. Okay. I failed by seven. <laughs> Dr. Ellis, you have a very strong desire to touch the symbols in the flat surface because they're smooth and they're glowing and it's kind of beautiful, the look of the symbols. So you're saying I'm having the urge to, or I physically am doing it? Very strong, you have the urge to. Okay. Alice. It's one of those where you're sort of like... Alice. Bad touch. Yeah. It could be a bad touch, Alice. But it, I mean, it's just... You know what happened to looks... Leon. Look at him. Unless he's healed now. That... Um, oh, no. And then I, 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 that kind of hits me. I'm still very thirsty. Uh, Dr. Ellis and Doc and, and Margaret, um, do a spot hidden. Seventy-seven. By the time I get uh, to the good rolls, this game will be. Can over I time. can I spend luck on spot yes. hidden? Yes, you can. Okay, I will. I will spend three luck to. Pass. Okay. Um, you're rather alarmed when you look at Leon because he has visibly lost weight and his cheeks are somewhat sunken in and his hands and arms look a little bit bonier than they did before. Leon, take another hit point of damage and you are excruciatingly thirsty. Um, that snaps me, when I look across to him, that snaps me out from wanting to touch the wall. Just right. from what Margaret said about like, you know, see what happened and things, and I and in that moment I say I look at Margaret and say, Margaret, we we need to go. I'm fine. We need to get the hell out of here. I need water. That's all. I need a lot of water. Give me water. Margaret, are you are you a good shot? I am gonna tell you here in just a second. <laughs> no, just I'll be f I have my days. Uh, you can Leon, have... Leon, get, get, can can you 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 hold up here? We're gonna go get you some water. We need the we need the shotgun in case we need to get past the. No, no, the... I'll, I'm coming with you up there, and I'll wait up there, and I'll hold them off. You guys. Uh, okay, right, but we we've got it. We have to motor. We have to we have to yeah, go quick. I know, I know, I know. All right. Well, um, Margaret, do you want to lead the way and just sprint up? Maybe I should lead the way. Oh, okay, Leon, you're about to dry up and blow away. There's no way you could lead. I'll yeah, lead the way. And if you, you die first, you die. You block the road for me and Margaret. Ah, true. Very dark, Ellis. Very dark. <laughs> I'm a dark guy. <laughs> uh, well, 
I am I am a big I am big muscly man, so well not anymore, but I've lost a lot of weight. Yeah, you're looking good. You've been hitting the gym. Uh no no no. no. What is this? The keto diet? <laughs> Can we uh, all run up the damn tunnel? There's yeah, we're running up the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Okay, who's who's going first? I'm going first. Here I go. All right, Margaret, you're going first. Uh, who's second? Me. All right, no, Doctor Ellis, uh, Leon, Leon, do a Dex roll. Thirty-seven. That's a pass. Okay, Leon, you are stumbling up behind them, but you're not going as fast. Um. Mark it to a luck roll. Nine. I don't think that's any. Oh, 59 out of 60. All right. As you get to the entrance and you have just a moments of hesitation as you as you look out, you can see on the flat sort of area right where the stairs are at the top of the stairs, you can see that there are five of these sea cucumber things, bright yellow, uh, that are moving slowly towards your position. Um, they are only about 20 feet away. Ellis, gotta move. Gotta dive, move. Dive down the cliff. Yeah, there's no cliff down to the ocean. It's rocks all the way down. Yeah, Climb down the rocks. Alice, they've blocked off all the paths, right? Go, go. Climb. Climb, climb down. Climb down. There's ways you can get around them. They're not evenly spaced or anything like that. I'll and hold them off when I'm up there. Right, so whichever way Margaret goes, I'm just going to bolt after her. Okay. I'm going to try Didn't... to get down the paths, but dodge them. They just weave and bob and and zig when they zag, and so on and so forth, and try to get on past the slugs. Uh, dex roll marker, please. Eighty-two out of <laughs> seventy. Can I use twelve luck? Yes, you can. Excellent. That's a big old luck pay. So we can use luck on di- on dicks. You can lose your luck on anything except luck and sand. Good to know. All right. <laughs> All right, so Margaret, uh, you sprint past one, and it definitely has little tentacles that that sort of reach out like like snails, uh, eyeball things. Um, in fact, you do notice that the thing does. It, it looks very much like some sort of a sea creature. Uh, but you you manage to get past it without getting on it. But you at the same time you notice that all of the places where these things have moved upward is covered with that slime. That's what I was just about to ask. You read my mind. So there's a lot of slime. Oh. On the path. On the path. Right. Um, Dr. Ellis, do a dex roll. Out of the dice. Out of the dice. Sixteen. That is a, I think, a normal pass for me, to be honest. Okay. No, it's just a hard. You manage also to avoid the pass directly, and you avoid the creatures, and you're going in a little bit of a roundabout way, but you're climbing over the rocks, and you're avoiding the slime. Leon, also do a dex roll. (laughs) Thirteen. Okay. So, although you're a little bit handicapped, you're a little bit weak, uh, you're extremely thirsty. Um, uh, you manage to climb over a larger rock and try to figure out another path going back down to the uh, the coastline. Um, all three of you can now do spot hiddens again. Um, I failed. I got a I, nine. I got a two. Okay. Leon, because you've taken kind of an, a little bit of a roundabout path and you've got boulders in the way, but you know where you're going and you're trying to avoid at all costs any contact with the, those things, you don't notice. But Margaret and Dr. Olson, you suddenly notice 
the mistress of the sea suddenly starts to keel over to one side in the water as if it were filling up with water and sinking. Um, I'm getting to the boat as quick as I can. Okay. We still have about a glimpse of the Margaret. Still have about a hundred feet to go. So the mistress of the sea is sinking? How's Mar Margaret's tied to it, but is that sinking as well? Well, it's it, her boat's actually kind of holding up the mistress a little bit, but the mistress might drag it down. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm bolting to the boats. Okay. Uh, since you are now both bolting, you can do another dex roll. Yep. Uh, I got a 29, which is a standard pass. Okay. Well, as a, Dr. Ellis, you're managing to jump over the rocks, but from the look on Margaret's face, uh, Margaret catches her foot on a rock and uh, goes, you know, face first onto the, the rocks below. Margaret, do a, a, a 1d4 damage to hit your hit points. Leon, do a dex roll. A fail, 82. Okay, you slide on a rock, and uh, but as you do, uh, you get a good kit, uh, glimpse of the Mistress of the Sea, and you can see she's sinking. Oh, no. No, my... My woman... No. All right. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Ellis and Margaret. Um, well, Dr. Ellis, you see Margaret go down. So what do you do? Um, how far away is she from the, the slugs? Uh, well, the slugs are now behind you, but you're about 75 feet from the boat. And they're relatively slow. Okay. They're relatively slow. Uh, did Margaret say how much damage she like? How bad does she, hurt does she look? I just ate. I just ate the rock. It's fine. I I can still All run. Right. All right, come on. Let's, let's keep, keep moving. Come on. Um and um yeah, I'm still bolting for for the boat because I'm yeah I, I know what I got to do, but I need to get there. Okay. As you are bolting for the boat and you're getting closer, you're about 50 feet away, you can hear that sort of awful, sickening sound of wood going and, and bits of it splintering. And you can see that the market's actually sort of breaking up and sinking quicker. Um, the Margaret or the mistress? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the, uh, the the mistress of the sea. And where it's tied to the Margaret, the Margaret is listing over to the side because it's filling up with water and it's going to pull it off. Yeah. Damn those cleats. They're just so well put onto the boat. Um, Leon, you are seeing, of course, this also happening. Leon, do a spot Why? hidden. Ah, uh, no. My boat. Hmm. 17. 17. 17? Yeah. You notice a number of those yellow blob things down by the coast moving up towards your position. Oh, fuck. There's more of them. Oh, no. I shout. I just shout. There's more of them. There's more of them. And you can see where he's pointing, and you can, in fact, see that there are more of them. Are they, are they in the front of the boat? No, they're they're not actually between you and the boat, but they are 100 feet down the coastline coming up out of the water. Okay. Ellis, I think he said save ourselves. I'm still, because um, I'm getting pretty tired, but I've, I know I've got to I've got to get to the boat before it sinks. I've just got to get there. Cut her loose, Ellis. Get there, um, I'll get to you. Of Margaret and Ellis, two luck rolls. Luck, okay. Luck. 48. 91. You all Pass. have been removing the luck that you've been using. So. I know. <laughs> I just pass. Like, I, I pass on my, on my thing. Okay. And Margaret, did you get, you pass your luck? 
Oh no, I got a 91. Okay. Which is why I'm changing dice at the present. Um, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Ellis, you get to where the plank is and you realize the plank is missing okay. because of the, 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 the Margaret is listing, but it's not that far of a leap. Um, I think with your luck, uh, you leap for the deck. What I would have done is I would have seen the plank was missing and I would have just kept my run and just, okay. The speed. Yeah. So you manage to leap. I'll have you do a dex to see if you hurt yourself when you land on the deck. Okay. Don't, don't forget about the ladder, Alice. Um, 42. Um, you know, I'm going to take the damage. I'll just take the hit. Okay. Uh, do a, a 1d4. 1d4. 2. Okay. So you hit the deck pretty hard. Maybe there's some wires or bits of the thing that are sticking out. Um, but you land on the deck, and the deck is slanting away from you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and you can see where the ropes are strained. Uh, they're wrapped yeah. around cleats that are holding the two boats together. And you can see that there are bits and pieces of the uh, Mistress of the Sea. The, the hull is just smashed in in places. Well, first thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm using the fire axe to cut the ropes free. Okay. So releasing it from the, the Margaret. All right. When that happens, um, uh, the Margaret flips back into an upright position. Uh, you can do a dex roll to see if you lose your footing. <laughs> 13, pass. Okay. So you managed to not lose your footing. By now, Margaret, you're there. And because the ship is, is more flat, uh, you can do a luck roll to jump. 54. How much I used, though. Ooh, 54 of 56. That's okay. Luck. So you also managed to jump and... Um, I think it's okay because maybe maybe Doctor Ellis sort of helps you. He catches Which, you. Yeah. Leon, uh, you are moving down the coast, uh, but um, I mean down towards the coast. But the going is rough. The path that you chose is is pretty rough and pretty rocky. Go ahead and do a dex roll for me. Zero, zero, zero. Me again. As you climb up over a rock, the rock is rather smooth and steep on one side. And you let go, and as you do, you slide down into a, a place between the rocks. And your foot jams into the crack. And... Uh, Go ahead and do a, a 1d4 damage. And I don't know what your hit points are at at this point. Four. I, I took four, and I would, I'm at two. All right. Uh, your foot is wedged, and those things are coming for you. I uh, don't even have the axe to come. <laughs> uh, Margaret and Ellis, you suddenly hear Leon starting to yell. Fuck. Uh, Leon, you can do a sanity roll. Fuck, 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 fuck. Twelve, I passed. What's that, Leon? Go, go and find help? Yes. Okay, uh, okay. all right, okay. I fucking had to go. Just leave me. I've had it. Uh, let's go. But I, I passed the sanity. Uh, you passed? Yeah. Okay. Still a 1d4. Okay. Yeah. At this point, you are two, three, kind of resolved with your your, <laughs> your position. To be um, honest, I'm just tempted to go. <laughs> you can see that uh, Leon is in extreme distress, and that he's not no longer moving down the coast towards your position. 
can also see those yellow things moving towards him. Uh, Just go, go. Margaret, we, we, we've got to go. Like he, he's infected anyway. It's like I said, we can't take him back. We can't risk infecting the rest of the, the town. It's a shitty way to be, Ellis. Just go, Margaret. It's a shitty way to be. <laughs> Margaret and Dr. Ellis, you suddenly hear that horrible wood cracking sound and the Margaret list suddenly to the side. Hoist the sail. All right, cool. Yeah, hoisting the sail. There's no anchor anyway. Hoist, um, the, hoist the main. Extend the Yeah, chain. I do do all that. And then I'm going to go down to the hole to see if I can find out what's made the hole. Dr. Ellis, when you take three or four steps down into the hole, you can see there is one of those giant slug things in the yeah. hole itself. Cool. And it is tearing its way through the side of the boat. Um, can I hit it with the fire axe? Sure, but there's slime everywhere. So um, I'm still fully covered. Go ahead and do a, uh, a what is it, fight? A brawl? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's actually not terrible. Uh, yeah, that's a standard pass. Okay. I would say What's you come down on that thing you? and the uh, the blade, the whole blade end of the, the axe buries itself in this thing. It's soft. Yeah. Um, I'm aiming for where I know the brain would be on a slug. I'm not even sure brains have slugs. But, I mean, slugs have brains. <laughs> somewhere in there, there's something. But Yeah. You know, well, actually, that would be the far end of it, the part that's tearing open the thing. So yeah. you're really hitting the back end of it. Um, the thing has a reaction. It sort of pulls away from you, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't stop what it's doing, and it doesn't bleed. It's, it's like hitting a big thing of jello or rubber. You cut into it, but it it's there's nothing coming out of it. Okay, I'm gonna grab my my bag. Okay. And I'm going to empty my bottle of alcohol on it. Okay. And we'll light it on fire. Yes, I know I'm in a boat made of wood, but it's either gonna sink us anyway or so I'm going to set it on fire and just hope this thing's flammable. Do a uh, do a dex roll. Lots of dex rolls tonight. Um, I can spend luck on dex, correct? Sure. All right, I'm spending five luck. Okay. Uh, when you light your lighter or whatever and, yeah. and do this, because it's alcohol, can't really see it very well it's a, bl a dark blue flame and you immediately back up the stairs yeah um you think it's on fire uh but you can't quite see the fire um yeah. and the thing does begin to react if slowly at first but but then it begins to react <coughs> margaret what are you doing steering the boat i haven't we're safe <laughs> at this point if i leave the wheel we'd be just i don't think there was any kind of uh, cruise control or, or yeah the anyway. boat hasn't actually moved yet it hasn't uh oh it's you're trying to catch the wind you're trying to to get it to go i hoisted the mainsail I've done everything to um, make this son of a bitch move, and it won't. Nothing's it uh, it does begin to move. It's moved away from the coast. Uh, as you hear uh, Leon 
uh, up on the coast suddenly screaming out in agony as one of these yellow things has come up towards him and uh, begun to touch him with its forward tentacles. You can do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, do it, do it. I'm yeah, I was like, right. tell my family I love uh, my shadow. <laughs> you hear, so you hear a shot ring out, and uh, Leon stops screaming forever. Um, I'm not a real sand on that because we all know what he just did, and nobody would be okay. I'm kind of preoccupied. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd pass, but I'm gonna take two. Okay. Um, so the boat starts to move out. And Dr. Ellis, you can see that the thing is, is reacting to the heat of the fire by sort of pulling away. But you also notice that the boat is catching on fire. Yep. And that Margaret, is. you start to smell smoke. Ellis, Ellis. Um, I, I kind of come back up and I say, uh, you, you need to get us to land as, as soon as you can, or at least to where other boats might be, okay? There's one of those things in the hold and I, I had to get rid of it. I had to set the thing on fire. I know I shouldn't have set the boat on fire, but I had to kill this thing. It was, we were going to sink anyway. And we don't know, know how many of those things are down there. I swear to God, Ellis, you are not a sailor. No, I'm not. I'm a freaking doctor. At which point you start to see smoke and flames shoot up out of the hold. Oh, for crying out loud. I look at the chart and I find the nearest land. I'm trying to look at the, see where the nearest land is. That's not a magic thing filled with slugs. It's at least an hour's sailing away. And the boat's going to be ashes in maybe 10 minutes. If I look back down the hold, is the thing dead? No, it's writhing around. Uh, you have a funny feeling that it's got, it's mostly water. So it's, it's not flaming. Your alcohol is flaming. And now Alice. the boat is, is on fire. Ellis, do we have, did we have salt? Could we just sprinkled salt on the son of a bitch and made him really shrivel up just like they did with... with I have Leon no idea. And Dirk? There was some kind of magic powder that made Leon dry out like an old dead slug. And Yeah, Dirk, but I think, that, I think that's connected to them. I think and that's... They, and they made Dirky jerky up there out of him, just dehydrated the ever-loving hell out of there's him. No, there's no, like... Um... I guess it's not a big enough boat for like a dinghy or something off the back or something like that. No. However, there are things that float. Okay, well, like, so yeah, I might, maybe, let's try and get as far as we can out away from the island and then jump on something that floats and hopefully we go ahead in the right, we can use stuff to row. I, I, we, we, what are our options? Well, I, I know the cushions that can be used as a flotation device. I learned that in boat driving school. It, okay, back well, in, it's back in... Because I don't want to... I mean, we can try to put the fire out, but then that means we're still going to deal with the freaking slug. You can't put the fire out, Alice. The whole damn boat's on fire. Because you set the son of a bitch on fire with alcohol. And that's just going to catch. And now our boats are all on fire and we're going to be floating around. Right. Well, then let's get our flotation devices and get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you literally have just a couple more minutes before you'll be. Yeah. Fine, Alan. <laughs> grab a cushion, grab something to row with, and keep in mind the nearest exit may be behind you. <laughs> all okay. right. So you managed to grab a couple of uh, flotation uh, things that are used for the, the nets and uh, they're pretty buoyant and uh, you jump over and the water is icy cold and uh, you're holding on to these things and you're pretty sure at that point you're not going to last an hour in this cold water and you as you're sort of floating there you can see the uh the margaret go up in flames it eventually breaks up and 
sinks into the water and there's a few moments of flaming rubble on the surface and then it all goes out and it's it's gone but there are pieces of it floating um you can see the island off in the distance um the fog is broken a little bit uh the sun is low in the sky it's going down night's coming on And there's something in the water moving towards you. They look like yellow bumps on the surface that are slowly moving towards your position. And I think that's where we'll end the story. <laughs> you know what? I'm, if we're ending there, I'm, I'm going to say I'm just in my head. We survive. I'm, I'm a take back. <laughs> I'm taking it. You 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 survive for you know, a little while. The only no, thing we don't. Think, the only the only thing I'm picturing is near far. <laughs> Remember you are. I took the easy way. All right. So the explanation is that. Um. Dirk found the island and he found the key and he made a chart because he figured he needed some equipment to come back and see what he could find. And he was hoping that there was pirate's treasure or something. Um, because if that key was an indicator of something, uh, then there was obviously more gold. So he went home. He didn't say anything to anybody. And he uh, went out that night and went back to the island. The island is similar to Relief in that it rises up occasionally out of the water. Uh, but in this case, what was entombed there was a, a star spawn. Uh, it was inside the egg. And had you touched the, 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 the figurine, the figures on the thing, uh, it would have hatched. Now, interestingly enough, the yellow slug things had been put in place a long time ago to prevent anyone from doing exactly what you guys had done. And so when Dirk came back, they killed Dirk. And they would have killed you to keep you from waking up the star spawn that was, that was imprisoned there. Um, yeah, coming in contact, especially with the spores, which when you pop the thing, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> That's exactly what it says here, that, that there is a chance. And I had you do a con roll, and you failed it. And the con roll was to see if you were infected, at which point you lose one hit point an hour until you're dead, and you get thirstier and thirstier because these little things are inside you that are sucking up the moisture and then they would hatch from you Shit. as new slug things. And that's pretty much the, the end of the story. <laughs> um, Question. Has yeah. any of the other playthroughs lived? No. Okay, right. No. Okay, and I um, feel okay about dying now. <laughs> when, I, when I played it through, uh, Margaret... Uh, which I played Margaret, uh, uh, at, when things got started getting weird, I just ran to the coastline, jumped in the water, and started swimming for the shore. And I pretty much got 100 or 200 feet out when something grabbed me and pulled me under. Because the things... Yeah, so, were, what were, the, um, so were, were they kind of like deep ones? The things that were worshipping in, in the images and stuff? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. This was a... Uh, um, you know, the star spawn are very much like Cthulhu. Yeah. They're like little Cthulhus. Yeah. Anyway, our players included Zane Fleming, John Byram, and Josh Harwood, with myself as the Keeper of the Secrets. We're currently producing up to five shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs of this show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. 
If you'd like to support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch that bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck. Good gaming. Thank you.